welcome to Friendship Moments with Friendship Baptist Church in Killen, Alabama. Thank you for joining me today. Let's start with a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for being here with us. We thank you, Lord, that you have put us in a place where we can present the gospel and spread the good news of Jesus Christ um, electronically, Lord, to people that we never could have thought of reaching years ago. Father, we pray for those that are tuning in to us, Lord, that you would open ears and hearts to hear and receive and respond to your message. And Lord, I pray that you would shut me down and let your Holy Spirit speak through my voice to those that are listening. Don't let it be anything of me, Lord, but only your word that goes forth. We give you such praise and glory and thank you for Jesus, your beloved Son, who has saved us from our sin, saved us from your wrath, saved us to your glory in Christ's name. Amen. I want to talk to you today about joy surrenders to love. And my text is going to be 1 John 4.10, but we'll get into that in a minute. I usually quote scripture from the New American Standard uh, Bible Version 1995, but today I decided to quote from the paraphrased New International Reader's Version. I'm going to encourage you to go back to the standard scriptures and get them, but um, this makes things kind of clear, and it would just drag out all day if, if I had to clarify, so I'm just, I'm just going to use this, stand, this paraphrased version today. Our son David lost his sight suddenly several years ago, and uh, he went to live in supported living, where uh, he started out having a, a job in a sheltered workshop, and uh, then the powers that be decided to shut them down, and then COVID came along, and they couldn't do their outings and go places, so he came home to live with me, and I'm so very, 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 very grateful. Uh, but I felt like he needed a dog. He'd always wanted one. He'd had one off and on through the years, but being in supported living, he couldn't have one. And I thought he needed a companion and a friend that would make the transition more comfortable for him. He was coming basically into a new place because this was some place he had never lived before we had moved uh, due to life circumstances. And so he was coming into a strange place that he, he didn't have any idea. And you know, it, it's unnerving. And so uh, I began to look for him a dog. Well, one of our grandsons had a cute little dog that came up, and he just seemed to be a stray. And John Michael could not find who he belonged to, so he had kept him. But he already had a really good dog. He has a nice German shepherd, and she's quiet and calm most of the time, but she's good. And, but he decided that Jasper would be a really good fit for David. And it turned out that that's exactly right. Jasper has some of that uh, rat terrier in him, so he has lots and lots of energy. But in the house, he's, he's pretty much calm. Um, when he gets excited, he jumps up and down. He doesn't jump all over us. And, and he loves to sit in David's lap. And I, I wish I could show you pictures because he'll get, climb up in David's lap and lay his head on David's chest and take a nap and just so sweet. And he follows David around the house, and he just really, really loves David. So he's, he's quiet unless he's defending his territory, you know, from invaders. Uh, we always know when there's something or someone in the yard. But when I tell him to be quiet, he kind of quietens down. Occasionally he talks back a little bit, but he, he usually plays real good. But when he gets outside, he's going 90 miles an hour. Well, now I'm too old to run after him and play with him like that. And David can't see to, and so it's kind of hard and just... Taking him for a walk does not burn off enough energy. So we decided Jasper needed a playmate. And so we adopted Joy from a wonderful rescue organization. Now, they didn't know a lot about Joy. She came with her, as a matter of fact, they had named her Apple. But she had come with her sister, Birdie, and they had just been found out on the side of the road, and they, had, they, were, they were in real bad shape. And they had rehabilitated them physically. But um, Bertie had been adopted and Joy had not. Um, and, uh, but when I saw her, I, I absolutely fell in love with her. And we hit, took Jasper to meet her and they got along very well from the start. So we adopted Joy. Well, do you know that God adopts us? Amen. 
when we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior. He rescues us out of this world and from what is called hell for all eternity. Ephesians 1, 4-6. God chose us to belong to Christ before the world was created. He chose us to be holy and without blame in his eyes. He loved us, so he decided long ago to adopt us. He adopted us as his children with all the rights children have. He did it because of what Jesus Christ has done. It pleased God to do it. All those things bring praise to his glorious grace. God freely gave us his grace because of the Christ, the one he loves. Joy came to us, though, with many, many fears. She was afraid of people. She was afraid of loud noises. The sound of a chain would drive her absolutely crazy. Gates terrified her, closed spaces she wouldn't go through. And that's kind of like us. We tend to be frightened and fearful of many things. But God will remove our fears because he is our father who loved us and adopted us. 1 John 4.18 says there's no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives away fear. That's because fear has to do with being punished. The one who fears does not have or has not accepted perfect love. Joy resisted our efforts to form a bond with her. And we tend to resist Holy Spirit's call to repentance. Acts 7, 51 says, you stubborn people, you won't obey. You won't listen. You're just like your people of long ago. You always oppose the Holy Spirit. Joy didn't trust us. We often find it difficult to trust God even after our adoption. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, obey him, and then he will make your path straight and smooth. We attempted everything we could think of to show joy we love her. God gave his most valuable gift to demonstrate his love for us. Isaiah 53, 6 says, all of us are like sheep. We've wandered away from God. All of us have turned our own way, and the Lord has placed on his servant Jesus the sins of us all. 1 John 4, 10 says, here is what love is. It's not that we loved God. It's that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. Joy didn't love me when I first saw her, but oh, I fell in love with her at first sight. Jeremiah 29 11 tells us that God says, I know the plans I have for you. I want you to enjoy success. I do not plan to harm you. I will give you hope for the years to come. But Joy really thought we had it in for her, and she really thought we were going to harm her, and it terrified her. For two years, David and I have been trying to help Joy heal from the trauma she must have suffered in earlier days. We just refused to give up. God never gives up on us either, neither before nor after our adoption into his family. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, he, it says he is God, the faithful God, who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. And in Deuteronomy 32, 4, we read a God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. And 1 Corinthians 1, 9 God is faithful. He has chosen you to share life with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. A few days ago, Joy came up to me. That was you. She nuzzled my leg. She hadn't done that in two years. She looked up at me, put her head under my hand, and let me pet her and hug her for the first time. And she's been affectionate. Ever since, she finally realized how much we love her and that we want good for her, just like we need to do that with our Heavenly Father. Surrendering to Holy Spirit's call to believe in the good news that Jesus saved you from your sins will result in sharing your life with the Son of God and spending eternity in his kingdom. You, too, will become the beloved child of God. Thank you. Blessings.